we need to, do, to define some types of materials. One type of material is a conductor. A conductor is a material through which electrons freely flow. So electrons flow freely through conductors. In other words, in a conductor, the electrons are loosely bound to the nucleus. They're, they can come out of the, the um, atom relatively easily and move to another atom. So electrons flow relatively freely. Some examples of conductors, they're all metals. For example, gold, copper, aluminum, silver. Those are all conductors where electrons will flow relatively freely through, through. We also have a type of uh, type of material, an insulator. An insulator is just the reverse of a conductor, where electrons do not flow freely. Examples of that are glass, silk, wool, fur. Those are all examples of insulators. So those are two extremes, conductor versus insulator. We also have one that's kind of in the middle. It's called a semiconductor. And a semiconductor is exactly what, you, what it sounds like. It's somewhere between a conductor and an insulator. It's right in between. And with a semiconductor, what you're doing is you're, you're adjusting the material properties of the material to try to get a specific resistance to electron flow, rather than trying to have as little electron flow as possible or as much electron flow as uh, resistance to electron flow as possible. You're somewhere in the middle. We don't really deal much with semiconductors in this class. Uh, there are a lot of them in computers and things like that. But in this class, we kind of deal with the two extremes with conductors and insulators. There is a fourth type of material, which is a superconductor. In a superconductor, there is no resistance to flow, to electron flow. In other words, they are a perfect conductor. Now, when I say no resistance to electro electron flow, that's exactly what I mean. I mean zero resistance to electron flow. We talk about something flying through the vacuum that you can breathe, and we can't find the vacuum that you can breathe. It's kind of an ideal case. But in a superconductor's case, you actually can get zero resistance to flow. That's what it means to be a superconductor. So if you have a superconducting material, a wire that's made of superconductor, and you set an electron in motion in that superconductor, it will actually never slow down. It will continue to move at a constant velocity because there's nothing resisting the flow of that electron. Which means, of course, that we should make all of our wires from superconducting material, right? All the wires in this building, all the wires in my computer, et cetera, should be made of superconducting wire because it would be much more energy efficient. Who can tell me what the issue with this is? Monsieur Lafayette, what? There are no superconductors. There are superconductors. They're very expensive. I agree they're very expensive, but that's not the main issue at the moment. Got it. They have to be cool to high degree low temperatures. They, the problem is, is that they only work at low temperatures. In general, uh, they work anywhere between, the typical super, superconductors are anywhere between 1 and 20 Kelvin. Uh, there is one that was found to be up to approximately 130 Kelvin, which is uh, the highest temperature superconductor that I know of. And you should be aware, class, 130 Kelvin, is that below or above room temperature? Below. It's quite a ways below room temperature. So the issue is that there is no such thing right now as a room temperature superconductor. There are a lot of different superconductors that are used, but in order for them to work, we have to keep the temperature of those metals at a very, very low temperature. So on your list of things to do would be 
to find a room temperature superconductor because if you do find a room temperature superconductor, not only will you win the Nobel Prize, but I will take you out to lunch. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just want to let you know right now that when you find that room temperature superconductor, you can tell the Nobel Committee that your high school teacher, your high school physics teacher, told you that it was a good thing to do. So you did it, and I will take you out to lunch. And then we'll go up to the spaceship and we hang out on the ladder and stuff. It'll be fun. OK. So unfortunately, good luck with your room temperature superconductor endeavors. Okay.